Hey everybody, I am Michelle with Birdie Bloom and today I am going to talk to you about the dinky. I'm gonna bring the dinky to you. And I think the dinky is a really well-known bag. In fact, I think people use this name for a lot of bags when in fact they're not even showing a dinky. It's just a super popular name. Bonnie Cashin used to even call some of her bag um, collections dinkies and they would refer to all different types of styles. But um, yeah, it's a popular name, it's a popular bag uh, and we're gonna talk about it. It's a cute little thing. So um, first I would like to say, <laughs> The one of the bags I think that's most often incorrectly called the dinky would be this bag. And that's, this is the pocket purse. As you can see, no seam at the bottom. I don't know if you could see that because I was moving too much, but this is the pocket purse. I've talked about the pocket purse before. Not a penny pocket. None of these are penny pockets. They never were. This is also often incorrectly called a penny pocket, but whatever, you know, the name is cute. Um, just not officially ever a penny pocket. So dinky pocket purse. And as you can see, D rings on the side. This has a removable strap. I'm not going to really show that to you right now. But so the style number for the dinky is 9375. And first I'm going to show you what was created first with that style number. And it's this bag. And this is also a, well, it is a dinky, it's a 9375, but in 1974, 1976, here are some catalog photos. Um, what you have is a mini clutch, and this would is, I guess, well, I guess this is known as the first dinky, but truthfully, it wasn't called a dinky at first, it was a mini clutch. And here are some catalog photos. The first one was from 1974. Um, this one's 1976. You even have um, a rough out version, which I do not have to show you. Also, it's not pictured, but it's gonna have that suede. Um, the rough out will have the suede uh, showing on the outside. And that had a different style number, 9378. So it was actually a mini clutch rough out, but this bag is in my own personal collection. I actually ordered another one because I love it so much. I don't know if I'm going to keep the other one, but I had been eyeballing this bag probably for a year. So, you know, it, it's been on the market for a year. Nobody was grabbing it. It wasn't called what it is, but, um, and I just decided that I was going to, to get it because it's burgundy guys or, I mean, I think that was the color they used, but do you see that, oh, that beautiful burgundy color, wine, maroon. It's actually one of my favorite colors. Made in New York City Creed. Um, really tarnished zipper pull. That's kind of happens with those. This also has, if you saw my video on that really unique skinny, um, case that I had, makeup kit case, it had that style zipper pull, the one that had a different lining that I think um, people can't necessarily confirm that it's authentic, but I think it was probably one of the original linings. I have the tags and everything. Anyway, same zipper pull, um, and it has the nautical hardware. Um, I'm going to show you how this little thing works. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but there is a little anchor on this hardware. Uh, squared top hang tag with the raw backing. Just a, a really, really beautiful color. Guys, I really like older leather. It's not everyone's favorite. It's thicker, it's kind of chewy, but it's really well saturated with color. And I like the feel. It, it feels so substantial, so solid. I mean, it's not like as soft, even though, I mean, it's a beautiful, pliable, lovely bag. It's not as soft as some of those favored leathers, such as the Costa Rican and the Hungarian and the Turkey leathers. And even some of the early 2000 China bags have a really nice soft leather um, that people, I mean, it has a great, those have a great hand feel. And they're, they're still good quality leather but there's something about these that just, it makes my heart sing. Um, they tend to be a little bit more textured. Uh, let's see if you can see that. Do you, 
you just see a lot of texture in it. And I just, I adore them. I love them. I love how they end up patinaing and this color change that you can tend to get. But sorry, I talked a lot about it. It's obviously a bag that I'm, I've, you know, decided to keep in my own collection. Um, but I love it. And there's another bag that I will talk to you about in the future that looks very similar to this. Um, if you know what I, what, or if you think you, um, you know what I'm talking about, go ahead and leave a comment below, but I'm going to wait to share it with you once I have them ready. I have quite a few of them, but we'll share what's really similar, but this is otherwise a dinky. It's just an early dinky. As you can see, the strap is also that double um, stranded strap. They're not my favorite strap, but I actually really like them. So the hookup for these, it's actually quite weird. These don't actually technically fully fit in these little holes. There's these just little rivets here. Um, if I like, what I've decided is I like to put them backwards. I don't technically know what the true way is, but I will tell you when you first start using this bag, it might be very challenging um, to get the hooks in and out. But with time and practice, you get, kind of get better. Um, and so it goes a little bit, but that hole is too big to take the full on hook. So it's really just the front hook and this front part right here. And that's what goes into the hole. Now I, why am I removing it often? I store my bags um, with the straps inside. I don't keep the straps on the bag at all. So, um, You'll see the oftentimes that's not the case and you'll see a lot of um, tarnish from here. Sorry, mm, that can be challenging. I'm gonna put that back in. I was gonna take it off, but I was gonna say, oh yeah, you can see a lot of the tarnish here from the hardware, from the brass hardware that gets onto the bag. And I can stain the leather, but oh, the color is just so gorgeous. So let's go ahead and put, actually, we'll talk about the other dinkies in a minute. She's my bag. Um, we're going to go ahead and put her on just so you can see. I love this bag so much. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess the lighting's not really great or she's not popping with what I have, but I just, oh, I love her. So mini clutch, dinky, 9375, one of the earlier versions. And they're out there. Okay, so what we have now though, and I guess I'll go with which one would have probably been made next, is this dinky. These are both New York City dinkies, but I can tell you that this one is definitely um, older, and that's just because of the leather feel. This was probably made in the late 80s. This is probably um, early 80s here. It just, it's again, thicker, chewier, and there is, an insane amount of patina on this bag um, I, to the point I don't really know what color it is. I thought it was brown. I think it's sometimes dark gray. It could be black. I'm just calling it black um, with patina. And here, I think it's looking really black, but this every time I pick this dinky up, it looks like a different color. Um, but this is what a dinky looks like. And in night, well, okay, by 1981. So I'm missing a lot of catalog photos between catalogs between 1976 and 1981. But by 1981, the 9375 was called a dinky and it had the sewn in tubular straps. Now, if you haven't seen my earlier videos on tubular straps, I am showing you right now how I crisscross. Um, one to store, but it also shortens the strap a little bit. Yep, this is the strap short. Um, oh, also sometimes if you're confused about a color, sometimes a hang tag really helps. This is not original to the bag though. I just um, added a hang tag that looked good for the error and that um, kind of complemented the bag well that I had. Oh gosh, I'm sorry, I'm not focusing at all. So um, so yeah, that, that didn't help. But, oh, beautiful patina on this one. Um, and so, yeah, I crisscross to store because these tubular straps can weaken on the sides if you just let them open like this. And they probably potentially even come to you a little weakened. So just stop that process and crisscross them when you um, store them. But this is the length of the dinky strap. It's not too long. You can't really cross body it. I mean, you can, I guess you can. 
Actually, yeah, that's fine. I honestly, I crossbody that um, earlier burgundy dinky. That actually, that's a great, I don't know why I said you can't crossbody it. That works for me. I'm five seven, by the way. I actually really like that. Um, hmm. Seems short, but so yeah, you can shorten it up for just an arm bag, but there's this one. So this red one here, um, the leather starts to get a little softer. Um, it's not as textured. Uh, it's still thicker, still really saturated, but this is a red dinky. This was also New York City. And uh, let's show you her with uh, the short strap or uh, strap shortened and how I like to wear them without tying them if I want the strap a little shorter. And this goes for any tubular sewn in strap, it works. So she's so cute. She's cherry apple red. Um, so pretty. She's gonna be for sale. I don't know if I'll have her up by the time this video posts, um, but I already have this one, this chameleon colored one. And I have this one listed for sale currently. This bag, I think I've talked about it or at least shown her somewhere. Or actually, I kinda wanna call it a he. Sorry, I have stuffing in these. Um, but this is a forest green dinky. And I thought this bag was bottle green when I had it. Um, possibly, I guess, forest green, but I truly thought it was bottle green because it was so pale from dehydration. It was super soft though still, but it was so pale. And all I did was condition this bag, guys, and clean the hardware. But I conditioned it and I was like, oh my gosh, this isn't bottle green. I have a lot of bottle green bags. This is actually forest green. It is so dark. It's so deep sometimes looks black. That's forest green for you. This is forest green. And this um, is not a uh, New York City Creed. This one is just a Made in the United States Creed. Let's see if you can see. Good picture there. And this leather, it's softer. It's, it's, it's closer to, this was a USA made bag, but it's just, I do see that people tend to like these softer leathers better. And, um, and this is one of those. So, uh, just, yeah, much more pliable. Oh, it's, it's, it's a lovely bag. They all are lovely. And though I love this leather, I just have a thing for the early New York city bags. Um, the older, the better, older, the better. And I've also come to find, I really like the Bonnie Cash and made, uh, Myers bags. Leather's completely different not at all the same quality um, as coach made bags, but I still really like it. I really like it. And eventually I'm gonna show you some of that stuff because um, I have quite a few of those things too. I just, I have too much to show you, to be honest with you. It's overwhelming. Sometimes I just really don't know what to talk about because I have too much to talk about. I am not um, running out of material anytime soon. So that's good, but, um, Yep. All right. Your dinkies. Oh, let's just put her on. We'll do the shoulder. Shoulder wear. Oh, stop it. That's my dog. Um, and actually, I'll do her long ways as well. Shh. Okay. Okay, buddy. Well, Buck is ready for me to... Okay, shh to be done, apparently. Okay, okay, so these are the dinkies for you. I um, did have one more thing to say about these. I almost forgot. Uh, in my research, what I realized is that, okay, so I showed you ones from the 70s and then ones from the 80s. Um, I do see creeds that suggest that they were made in the early 90s. I don't know until when, but I'm gonna tell you and hold tight for the full bit of information here. There is not a dinky with the style number in 9375 until you get to 2000. So let me reiterate, in 1994, Coach started putting style numbers in the bag to go along with the bag, okay? So 
What I'm telling you is that in the 90s, it does not appear that dinkies were made. I also don't see them in catalog photos. That doesn't mean anything. Um, they could have, there could be one, or I mean, there could be a couple out there. I don't know, I haven't seen them. Um, so I am just bringing that to your attention. Interesting, it's just, I mean, it doesn't change anything for you, but it is very interesting that I don't see any dinkies from 94 on possibly even a little earlier, but you can't really date them in the early 90s. So, in 2000, I, you start seeing them with the style number in, um, and the only countries that I see them uh, produced in is uh, China and Costa Rica. So, just a really interesting little tidbit. They seems like they might've stopped making these for a little bit, and then Coach brought back the dinky which doesn't look like a dinky at all, many, many, many times. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not as affluent with the newer coach bags, uh, but they did. Uh, the dinky is definitely iconic. And so thanks for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more vintage coach bag talks, and join my Facebook group, Vintage Coach Eye Candy, if you wanna catch pretty pictures of vintage coach bags, okay? Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.